Our next talk is about Nix as a static site generator. Let's welcome Patrick. Hi, yeah, so first a couple of things about me. I'm Patrick Vavanis, uh, the site name is difficult, don't bother with it. I've got a blog at pwi.io. And I'm mostly a Rust programmer, but I've been into Nix for like four years now, and I like to experiment a bit. And my recent experiment is about using Nix to actually generate my blog. Um, and I guess the easiest way you could, you know, create a blog is, you know, you know, upload WordPress or you know whatever's uh, whatever's hype right now. But um, I had this different idea that instead of using Nix the easy way, in which case you would create a derivation which just you know copies, like you would use Hugo or whatever else is popular right now, you would use Nix to just copy the files, run Hugo build or whatever, it produces some HTML files as the output, and then you copy them out. So I think that's the easiest way. And I wanted to experiment a bit, and I wanted to show you, you know, how it turned out, some pros, some cons. And basically, um, the idea is that if we have some basic Nix derivation, like next, yeah, next derivation. The output of it uh, can be like usually it's like you know directory with like binaries and whatnot, but it can be actually just a tree of arbitrary files. And um, before I go into the actual source code of my blog, I want to give you like high level idea of what we'll be dealing with, and then I'll just jump you to what I produced over the last two years. And basically, the idea is that you need to know just two functions from Nix packages. One is called write text. Uh, it takes two arguments, and we can imagine it like, you know, um, we can say that we pretend it generates a text file, um, HT, um, HTML file, and we call Nix build. It produces some derivation that is basically just this text file. And on its own, like we got just this result, it's not actually a site you can open. I mean, I guess you could sort of open it, but it's in the web browser, but it's called result, not index HTML. And you have just one file, it's not of a directory tree. And the second important function you get to use is um, link farm, um, which basically allows you to generate a tree out of some, like, you know, directory, out of some, out of a couple of derivations such as those. And we can imagine that we would do something like this. So we have some index file, index page. And now we want to have, as a result, not this single file, but you know, like a full directory. And it should be something like this. Now if we rerun Nix build, it works. As a result, we get our directory. And the basic idea is that you chain those two, so write text and link farm to generate, you know, a whole, like the whole subsite. So for instance, we can imagine that we have some post. Like we have some post. I don't know, let's call it just post post A. Post B. And then to generate a directory of posts, you just call this link farm. Oh, it's supposed to be F. And now to link it back to you know, the final output, we might imagine we have something like this, path, posts. And this should generate basically the whole tree. Um, and this is the, the gist of it. So, um, well, obviously the site doesn't do much, you don't have links and so on, because it's not like a four hour workshop on how to create uh, sites in Next, I wanted to give you a highlight idea of those two building blocks that you can then use to actually make you know a fully fledged website. And um, what we are aiming towards um, is like you know a normal website. And what Nix allows you to do, well, allows me to do, but maybe you'll pick up the idea and you'll like it. What allows you to do is that I have my website in here. 
And the basic idea is that I have two main directories, one with content, uh, which is like pure metadata about my stuff. So like I gave some talks and I have like metadata of the talks I've given, like, you know, title, tags, whatever, without any like CSS styling, without any HTML generation, generation like rendering facilities. Uh, and you know, the same with posts. I, I've got some posts and they just contain some metadata. And then I have the, like the whole framework that takes stuff from this directory, like you know, all of the posts, and basically generates stuff like the whole website using this, more or less, in this pattern. So for instance, when we have, let's say, well, first of all, let me run it locally. So, uh, so we can perform some actual changes live. Address is already in use. One sec, probably haven't run in somewhere, yeah. Will it start, will it start? Right, yeah. So the basic idea is that um, we can, um, having this whole derivation that builds, that builds this whole website, uh, which is just, you know, just a directory, we can actually uh, very easily um, sort of self-hosted locally using Python. So I don't actually write Python that much, but apparently it contains like self-hosted simple HTTP server. And the most important stuff is this, is that it allows you to sort of run the server locally when you point it to a directory. And in this case, I have this whole, you know, derivation that builds this whole tree of my website, you know, all of the index HTMLs and whatnot. And if you point it to this directory, you can then use it to you know, run it locally. The same you can do with Nginx or you know, Caddy or you know, what have you. But Python is nice for local development. And we can, run it, we can run the whole site locally. And now we can make some changes like, um, I don't know, we have, you know, like we have this uh, sort of post. I can change you know, its title. And now um, one of the drawbacks is that it doesn't have live reloading. So if you're like used to Hugo or you know whatever, uh, they sort of reload it automatically. In this case, we have to uh, do either Nix build, to, you know, force Nix to rebuild the site. In my case, Nix rerun, and um, we get it. We get it built. And um, well, the, as I said, the gist is that we have all of the content stored in here. Um, and then framework takes care of generating, for instance, this um, tags page. So for instance, what it does is that, uh, to, to, yes, it follows this link farm pattern. So we have directory called tags. And then we use a basic Nix function such as just map, oops, such as just, you know, built in array mapping to actually go through all of the tags and then do something with them. In this case, for each tag, we well, first generate the index site, which is basically just um, you know, Nix, uh, Nix used as a templating engine. So if we would look, ah, this, this, this would be this site. So we have some UL that you know, goes through all of the tags and basically um, calls some functions that render actually the tag, so like this single, this single piece of data. Then what this next expression generates is that we have those tags, corresponds to this one, and then basically using you know, the built-in map functionality and then you know, converting back to string, we go through all of them and generate some pages basically on the fly because within the content directory, I do not have actually any page that you know, lists all of the tags, so some sort of data is implied from the content. And um, this allows you to, so using Nix as a templating agent is both great and sort of a curse because like, it's great in the sense that it's mostly readable, like we generate some link with some string variable, uh, some, some pieces take a bit more to you know, understand. Uh, but eventually, I think I'm pretty satisfied with the setup and Basically, I learned Nix using, you know, building Nix this side because, you know, expressions like this, they 
kind of looks scary, but actually, for instance, what this function does is that um, it takes, uh, in this case, types of lists like post or a tag, because both can have tog, uh, tags, and then you know, finds all of, the, all of the posts and tags, and then just counts them. So for instance, this function counts, uh, returns all of the posts that contain this specific tag, and this corresponds to, I don't know, this part of the, of the site. And after time, it actually becomes very simple, and I'm rather satisfied with the setup. Um, I wanted to go through, you know, highlight some, um, some pros and cons I have written down. And right now, right now, no, one more thing because I go, before I go straight to pros and cons is that an X superpower, which I use, I use in here, is that you can actually extend. Um, you can use any arbitrary code, well, any arbitrary in you know, quotes, as an X function. For instance, um, to, 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 I, uh, when I write my posts, I write them actually in, in sort of HTML-ish language. So if we allow open like, you know, one of those posts, whatever, this is mostly HTML, but this is actually fake HTML because I do have invented one, well, now that, now that I think about it, a couple of custom tags. Like I wanted this whole site to be generated on the fly without any JS dependencies during the runtime. And I do like to do, to have like a snippets of code that I wanted to have highlighted. And so what I've done is that I invented a custom HTML tag and that uses sort of HTML-ish syntax. So I, it uses a comment to, you know, actually have the proper, so that I don't have to worry about the escapes, but this is not a comment, this is part of the body of the tag. And as a part of this Nix building process, I pass this, all of this body HTML file through a Rust application um, that I conveniently called uh, render post. And basically there's this application that takes my you know, fake HTML-ish code and outputs actual HTML, uh, mostly by calling pig pigmentize, which allows me to automatically add some formatting and whatnot, does some minor clarity checks. And there's a very cool pattern that allows you to call this Rust code as a Nix, as a Nix function. And basically the idea is that there's this comment well, maybe I'll write it in a bit easier way. There's this comment in Nix packages called run comment, and it allows you to uh, run arbitrary, well, more or less, as, as before, more or less arbitrary uh, choo -choo -choo. bash script. Yeah, let's say bash, but I'm not sure, but some shell script as a part of the Nix build process, as long as you generate the out file. And the idea is that you can do something like, uh, like this. And the trick is that if you now called, uh, is it built in? Yeah, it's built in read file. On this result, you get this output as a next string. So in this case, if we evaluated this, and the result of this expression is a next string containing, well, the value hello. And because you can actually you call you know, any executable in here, you can as well just write your own Python script, Rust application, Go, whatever, that allows you to take some arguments, process them, you know, standard I.O. stuff, and produce some output. And in my case, this boils down to piping the original fake HTML and saving the actual proper HTML into output. And then I read it back as a next string so that I can, you know, pass it, pass it later to do, you know, layout, whatever. And I gotta say, this counts as an import from derivation, I think, um, which is a fancy word for saying that if you wanted to do stuff like that on actual Nix packages, this wouldn't fly, I think. But if you have, you know, if you're doing stuff for yourself or you don't care about it, that's, that's, a, great, <laughs> that's a great thing to have in your tool set. And yeah, before we jump into q and I wanted to, you know, give some minor highlights, some minor thoughts as a pros and cons. And yeah, basically I'm satisfied with the setup because it's plug and play. So um, because I can just run Nix build, well, in my case, I'm using flakes, so Nix space build without the dash. 
it produces this result file, uh, well, not AL, just result that contains uh, some posts, files, well, everything. It integrates well with um, SAS, because for instance, I don't like writing uh, CSS by hand, so as a part of the build process, I just called a uh, next derivation that converts SAS into CSS, and then I get basic CSS as the output. And um, to show you how easy, how well it integrates with, let's say, deployment, it's basically one line of code to actually have it deployed. And, uh, well, one is maybe too much, but to, hold, to show you the, the, the gist is that I'm using Nix Flakes, and I've got this website posted on GitHub, so I just pull it into my Flake Nix, and then in order for Nginx to actually host this whole site, um, because the output of this derivation is just a directory, I can tell Nginx to, you know, this is the root of the site, and that, that's it. This is everything you need to actually deploy this. And it's rather convenient. The rest of the rules are basically some re redirections from the past, but basically this boils down to this, and you've got the site deployed as long as you generate directory tree. And yeah, as I said, to, some, to, to wrap up with some specific pros and cons, yeah. Plug and playability. Um, if the site builds, it should mostly work in the sense that I showed you that I'm using this um, custom HTML-like format. If I make a typo in there, forget to close the tag, whatever, because the entire site is built when you call next build, it's sort of like all of the posts are also validated there. And if there's some unclosed tag or whatever, I, I see it immediately as compared to, you know, having some lazy rendering or whatever on, on demand. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm using SAS in my case and pigmentize to actually to have, <clears throat> to have syntax highlighting, but you can use everything else. Like, oh, well, I'm also I'm mentioning custom fonts in here because uh, just for fun, I'm also using IOSFK. Uh, like, you know, this, this font to, to format the code blocks. And it's very easy to, uh, well, normally you would have to, you know, upload it to your assets directory, whatever, but with Nix, I just, there's like a single line to pull it to CSS and you've got it. So, you know, this whole approach very neatly integrates with everything Nix packages have to offer. And yeah, you can use this run command trick to delegate all of the stuff that you wouldn't want to write in Next, like I wouldn't probably want to write a fake HTML parser in Next, so I've done it in Rust. And you can delegate all of the stuff that you don't feel comfortable writing in Next to different languages, and it works well. And there are some cons, so as I said, there's no out-of-box instant reloading. It is sort of my fault because, um, as I said to you, I've as I've shown you, I've used in this custom Python script that serves as a HTTP server locally. It could be extended to, uh, to support reloading, but it's not out of the box. Um, because Nix has no explicit type system, sometimes you get very cryptic error messages, and this comes painful, for instance, when you have the metadata of the post, like some stuff is sort of typed. I mean, most of the stuff is typed, but implicitly like dates are specified in this YMD format, and if I wrote, if I made a typo, it wouldn't be pointed out towards this file, it would be uh, some random code elsewhere that's failing because it tries to access a field that's not there. So this, uh, this can be problematic. And there's no built-in testing framework um, as compared to, <laughs> well, well, Rust, I guess, where you can just run cargo test and you've got the tests in here. Uh, with Nix it's a bit more difficult, and it would come handy because, for instance, the dates in here are specified in this, well, random format, but they are pretty printed. And I've got small, small function that allows you to pretty print dates, and it's not tested. I mean, I see it works, obviously it works, but <laughs> it would be nice to, to have it tested, but there's no built-in facilities to do that, so it's sort of a finger-crossed development. And yeah, yeah. Um, as I said, there are some cons, but I've been doing it, improving my site over the past two years, and I'm quite satisfied with the setup. If you would like to, to you know, try it locally, basically you would have to go ahead and clone, uh, well, this repository in GitHub, and basically 
most of my custom stuff is in this directory. Uh, if you change it, you would get your own site, at least you know, to, to play with, to get bootstrapped, and you can write your own stuff. Oh, shut down the server, never mind. Um, which I highly recommend, because even though some parts of Linux can be um, like difficult to understand at first, like, you know, it might look like a gibberish if you're not used to it. Um, but I think after like a week or two, it actually made sense and most of the stuff clicked. So, um, so, so yeah, I can recommend that. And yeah, yeah, I guess that would be time to move to Q&A if we have time, right? Yeah. Cool, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, first of all, thanks for the talk. I love Cursed Software. Um, I just have one question. How much time would you think you've spent on this? Oh, oh, way too much. But you know, it sort of starts easily because, for instance, now I have both posts and talks and some tags on my site, but it started very easily as just basically this uh, list of you know, posts. And back then it was easy. Right now, if I had to write it from scratch, it would take me probably like a week. Well, maybe two days to you know, get started, but then more time to polish. Uh, but as I said, it started as an experiment, and with, with that, having that in mind, I'm satisfied. I wouldn't probably recommend it to you know, have it professionally. Like, it's a bit difficult to expand on, especially because and still not so many people are used to Unix. Uh, but as an experiment, I'm happy with it. It took, like I said, a, a couple of days and a couple of days every now and then to, you know, improve stuff. Uh, but I gotta say, just to, you know, to to um, cross the T's and you know dot the I's, that I'm more hap more happy with this setup than I was with Hugo because I started with a typical out of the box static site solution like Hugo or something else. There's like tons of them nowadays, and I had the issue that I like to extend stuff to, you know, uh, mold it to my will. And with Hugo, I had this uh, problem that everything felt like it was curated for you. Like you have, because Hugo supports multilingu uh, many languages, multilinguality, whatever, uh, you sort of had to build your stuff around this framework. And with this, you can actually write stuff any way you want. You just write an expression to you know, convert it to whatever you need at the output. Yeah, also thanks for the talk. Um, do you write everything in raw XTML? Or do you actually have something like a markdown pa a parser for the content? Oh, uh, you mean like some linter or? No, more like, um, so you, like as you see here, you raw, uh, write the uh, HTML raw in Nix. But I was thinking like, do you have some files that you just pull in and then render for the website and then the website is your custom framework for, for it? Or do you actually just write everything in uh, Nix? Oh, um, so as far as I understand, I actually write like the metadata in the next, but for the actual content, I actually just use read file and keep it elsewhere. Ah, okay, that was the passer. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, as I said, basically this takes this file and then later some part of the component, actually some part of the framework, passes it through this Rust application that, you know, converts the stuff, but uh, this is more or less what you get uh, at, at the output minus the listing tags or whatever else. Uh, have you tried using uh, Nixus modules to add types to all of this? Or metadata and maybe data? Um, I, uh, for this particular project, not because as the output I wanted to have this single mm, single you know, directory of symlinks or whatever to the actual content. So I think NixOS modules don't fit really well within this project, but I do have different project, uh, some, you know, some game I wrote that actually uses NixOS modules so that when I deploy it on my servers, uh, I just pull this sort of, sort of my game and then in order to deploy it, I just have this custom module that says, you know, my game name enable true. And this also works really well, I can recommend it because also within this repository of that game, I also have, also when I do deployment, or before the deployment, I run a temporary NixOS container on my laptop to sort of validate that it still works, you know, to test it locally. And then when I just update the version within Flake in my actual infrastructure project, I know it will work. 
So yeah, for this for this project, no, but for different ones, I do I do use Nixos modules. You can actually have any package as an output for your module set. Mm, could you could you repeat? You can have any package as an output for your module set, so that uh, it doesn't have to be Nixos system or something. Ah, right, right. In the sense that I could have a module that you write enable, and this creates you an ex um, like an engine service with this already point in. No, like, uh, I guess we'll take it offline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for this. This is awesome, and uh, I can finally have something replace my Next.js site. <laughs> please do, please do. <laughs> we're good? Yeah, we're good. Let's thank our speaker again.